So I've been meaning to try creative coding for a while now, using P5.js, especially after seeing all the cool stuff that can be built with it on the Coding Trains YouTube channel. However, I couldn't really think of any projects to take up that interested me until recently. I was walking home from a local restaurant when I saw a kid and his mom playing with a ball on the sidewalk. One thing led to another, and the ball rolls under a moving bus and gets completely destroyed by it. Amongst the screams of the little boy, his mom yelling at him for trying to run onto a street filled with traffic, and the concerned faces of people around, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool to build an infinite Fibonacci spiral animation using P5.js? Let's get started. So for those of you that don't know much about Fibonacci spirals, it's just an approximation of the golden spiral, which is a special logarithmic spiral that's usually observed in nature. The golden spiral has certain mathematical properties that makes it special. But for this video, we don't need to know anything about that. What we do need to know is how we can use a Fibonacci sequence to construct and approximate the golden spiral. So assuming we have the following Fibonacci sequence, each number within the sequence is used to draw a square with a side length equal to that Fibonacci number. So for example, the Fibonacci number 21 in this Fibonacci sequence corresponds to this Fibonacci square with a side length of 21. Each Fibonacci square is then placed in this counterclockwise pattern with the first Fibonacci square being drawn at the center. Finally, to create the spiral, we draw quarter circles or arcs between the opposite diagonals of each Fibonacci square. For this coding challenge, not only do I want to generate the Fibonacci squares and the spiral, but I also want to animate it to get this infinite zoom effect. The key difference between this animation and what I will be doing is that instead of zooming into the center of the spiral, I will be creating an animation that zooms out of the center. But you could easily modify the code that I show you later on to make it zoom in. To start off, I've created a workspace that contains two files, sketch.js and index.html. Sketch.js is where I'm going to write all the code that creates the animation. Index.html is just a standard HTML boilerplate that defines two script tags. The first script tag points to the p5.js library, and the second one just points to sketch.js. If you're not too familiar with using p5.js, or you're wondering where you can find the HTML boilerplate that I've used in index.html, I recommend checking out p5.js's Get Started Guide. The guide goes through the basics of p5.js, shows you how to create a simple animation, and also talks about how you can start developing with p5.js. Okay, now that I've set up my workspace, I'm gonna start by defining the setup and draw p5.js functions and get a canvas to show up on the screen. If you're not sure of what the setup and draw functions are, the setup function is called once when the program runs and should be used to define initial environmental properties such as the canvas size, or it can also be used to load media such as images before starting your animation. The draw function on the other hand is called indefinitely. And so you can think of it as an infinite loop that's responsible for constantly drawing onto your canvas. So after setting up the canvas, I spent some time trying to work out the logic to get the Fibonacci squares and arcs drawn on the screen. I thought I was above using a whiteboard and a marker, so I tried to figure everything out in my head, but I just ended up breaking P5.js instead. After wasting about 30 minutes to an hour of my life, I decided to finally work out the logic by hand. So let's jump into my iPad so I can show you guys what I came up with. So this is the solution that I came up with. First, define and initialize an array with some Fibonacci numbers. I'm calling this array fibs. Next, within the draw function, move the canvas origin from the top left corner to the center using the p5.js translate function.
we then iterate over each Fibonacci number. For each Fibonacci number, start by drawing a square using the p5js rect function. Then, draw an arc from the top left corner to the bottom right corner of the square using the p5js arc function. The arc should be centered at the top right corner of the square. Then translate the origin to the bottom right corner of the square. And finally, rotate the origin by negative 90 degrees using the p5js rotate function. Now, as we step through each Fibonacci number and repeat these steps, the Fibonacci squares and the spiral should get drawn as expected. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the code editor and implement these steps. To use degrees as my angles instead of radians, I need to call a p5js function called angle mode and set the mode to degrees. Okay, so it looks like the code has drawn something on the screen, but it's a bit too small for me to see. So let me try and add a few more Fibonacci numbers to the fibs array and see if it looks correct. Okay, cool. So we can see a spiral starting to form on the screen, but I'm going to add in a few more changes to the code. First, I'm going to initialize the fibs array to just contain two Fibonacci numbers, one and one. Next, I'm going to define a function called add fib that adds the next Fibonacci number to our fibs array. After that, I'm going to initialize the fibs array within the setup function by making a call to the init fibs function. Then I'm going to implement the init fibs function. So the init fibs function is just responsible for adding 100 Fibonacci numbers to our fibs array. This way, the fibs array has enough Fibonacci numbers to actually cover the entire canvas. Okay, after running this code, we can see that the spirals and Fibonacci squares get drawn on the canvas as expected, and they actually fill out the entire canvas. Now that this is working, I'm gonna try and figure out how to get that zooming out effect to work. Okay, after thinking about this for a while, this is what I've come up with. First, let's define a variable called scale outside our draw function and initialize it to a value of one. Next, multiply each Fibonacci number with the scale value within our for loop. At the end of the draw function, update the scale to be 99% of its current value. By doing this, on every successive call to the draw function, the value of scale gets smaller and smaller. As a result, each Fibonacci square and the arc within it is drawn slightly smaller than before with each iteration of the draw function. This should give us the effect of zooming out of the center of the spiral. Okay, let me implement this and see how it works. Okay, great. We can see that we're getting this zooming out animation 
However, after thinking about this for a while, I believe that there is a problem with this solution. So within the init fibs function, instead of adding 100 Fibonacci numbers to the fibs array, let's just change this to 25 Fibonacci numbers and see what happens. We can see that eventually we run out of Fibonacci squares and arcs to draw on the screen. Now this is just happening because as we keep multiplying each Fibonacci number with a smaller and smaller scale value, the side length of the Fibonacci squares are going to get so small that they're all going to be visible on the canvas at the same time. So let's jump back onto the iPad so I can show you how I'm going to fix this. Fibonacci spirals are self-similar. And what that means is after a certain amount of time, it just looks as though the animation has restarted. Let's assume that the drawing on the iPad at the moment represents the initial state of the canvas when we start the animation. So we can think of this as being the first frame of the animation. And let's focus on squares 13 and 2, which I've shaded in with yellow. Eventually, as the animation goes on, the Fibonacci square with 13 in it is going to shrink down to the size of the Fibonacci square with 2 in it and take its place. At that point, the entire animation is going to look just as it does at the moment. So if I can figure out when this is going to happen, I can just manually reset the scale values and the fibs array and just restart my code. And that should fix the issue that we saw before where it seems as though the animation has just ended where all the Fibonacci squares become visible on the canvas at the same time. So here's how I actually calculate the scale value at which the animation appears to restart itself. For this example, I can set up a simple equation which says 13 times s equals to 2, where s represents the scale value at which the animation appears to restart. Therefore, s is equal to 2 over 13. However, we can generalize this equation by noting that 2 is 4 spaces behind 13 in our fibs array. Therefore, the general equation that I can set up is just f of i times s equals to f of i minus 4, where f of i represents a Fibonacci number within the fibs array, and f of i minus 4 is a Fibonacci number 4 spaces behind f of i. The general equation that we can derive from this is that s equals f of i minus 4 divided by f of i. So as soon as the scale value becomes less than or equal to s, we can restart the animation. Let's go back to the code editor and implement this. I'm going to define a global variable called minscale and then add a call to the set minscale function within our setup function. Then within the set minscale function, I'm going to extract the last Fibonacci number and another Fibonacci number four spaces behind it and calculate and set the min scale value. Finally, towards the end of the draw function, I'm going to add a conditional that checks if our scale variable becomes less than or equal to min scale. And if it does, just restart the animation by reinitializing the fibs array and the scale variable. And this is what the final result looks like. To show you that this is working, within the init fibs function, I'm going to add only 12 Fibonacci numbers to our fibs array. That way, when the animation restarts itself, you'll be able to see it more clearly. Okay, so let me just undo those changes. Final thing that's left to do is to add some colors to our Fibonacci squares so that the animation resembles the golden spiral animation. 
To do that, I'm going to create an array called colors and populate it with four hex colors that I can just get off Google. Next, within the for loop that iterates over each Fibonacci number, I'm going to extract and cycle through the colors array using the modular operator. This way, we cycle through the colors as we iterate over the Fibs array. Now, I can just pass that color into the p5.js fill function, which will fill the Fibonacci squares with the colors passed into it. And this is what the end result looks like. Okay, so there are probably a bunch of improvements that can be made to this code. One of them is improving the implementation of the init fibs function. It's probably not a good idea to blindly push 25 Fibonacci numbers into the fibs array, because what if the canvas size, instead of being 800 by 800, is 1600 by 1600? In that case, 25 would probably not be enough Fibonacci numbers. So this could be improved by calculating the number of Fibonacci numbers that need to be pushed into the fibs array based on the canvas size. Another improvement is to not use global variables, but instead to take a more object-oriented base approach. If you enjoyed this video, then consider supporting this channel by hitting that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to take a look at the code for this challenge, then I'll leave a link to a GitHub repository as well as a live P5.js sketch in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.